The Nashville Predators made arguably the biggest free agent splash in NHL history by signing not only one, not two, but three star players to try and boost their team status from fringe playoff team all the way to the Stanley Cup contender. But 15 games of the season, they're in the exact opposite position of where they wanted to be. The Preds' playoff performance was sort of a letdown. It was marked by blown leads and wasted opportunities. Vancouver lost Thatcher Demko after Game 1, leaving the door wide open for Nashville to take control of the series, but they failed to seize the opportunity. And Game 1 was just a warning for what was to come. Nashville carried a 2-1 lead into the third period, but crumbled, allowing three unanswered goals and a 4-2 loss. Game 4 was even more devastating. Up 3-1 with under 3 minutes remaining, they allowed Brock Bresser to score twice, completing his hat-trick and forcing overtime, where Elias Lindholm delivered the dagger to put Vancouver up 3-1 in the series. Five for the Vancouver Canucks in front, Lindholm scores! Elias Lindholm! Despite outshooting the Canucks significantly throughout the series, the Preds couldn't convert their dominance into victories. Their inability to close out games and capitalize on Vancouver's goaltending situation ultimately sealed their fate, putting them out in six games. Now, it's not like they had the weight of the world on their shoulders. A lot of experts had them losing the series, as Vancouver was just a better team in almost every aspect. So to lose the series wasn't much of a disappointment, but the way they did it was. And in the exit interviews, general manager Barry Trotz expressed that he was proud of the team, but if they could get better, they will. And they did. July 1st, 12.01 p.m., just one minute after free agency started. And the Predators got their feet warm by signing the 2023 Conn Smythe winner, Jonathan Marcheseau, for five years. Getting Marcheseau was absolutely huge. He is a proven playoff reformer, and with the idea of getting back there, he would help out big time. And just 10 minutes later, it was confirmed that two-time Stanley Cup champion and seven-time 40-goal scorer, Steven Stamkos, was going to be a Predator for the next four years. Nashville sent shockwaves throughout the league just 10 minutes into free agency, but they weren't done just there. 30 minutes after signing a soon-to-be Hall of Famer, they went out and got a top-pairing D-man in Brady Shea to bolster their blue line for the next seven seasons. Free agency had only been going on for about 45 minutes, but the Predators were already a completely different team. They brought in a very steady defenseman, but they also brought in two proven playoff scorers to add to their already lethal forward core. I mean, this team has Philip Forsberg, who was coming off a career high of 94 points and nearly 50 goals, Gustav Nyquist, who put up a career high 75 points at the age of 34, and Ryan O'Reilly, who's a former Conn Smythe winner himself, who still produces at an elite level. Adding a perennial 40 goal scorer in Steven Stamkos, an elite playoff performer in Jonathan Marcheseau, and a new top D pair for Roman Yossi and Brady Shea immediately jolted this team from middle of the pack to Stanley Cup contenders. This was massive for Nashville. Most teams pray to land just one of the big fish on the market, but landing three of them is a dream come true. Not only did they bring in three new guys, but they solidified their crease for the next eight years by extending UC Saros, who is no doubt one of the best goaltenders in the league. He got locked up until 2033, and this was good news for everyone in the organization, except maybe Yaroslav Askarov, the 22-year-old goaltender who was said to be the most promising netminder in hockey. He spent most of his time with Nashville in the minors, but felt he could be a starting NHL goalie and make an impact on an NHL team. So with that in mind and Nashville pretty much choosing sorrows over him, he requested a trade out and four days later, he was a San Jose Shark. So with the roster set, the Preds looked like a dangerous force in the Western Conference. Their preseason Stanley Cup odds raised from plus 6,600 the year prior, all the way to just plus 1,600, which was tied for the fifth best in the league. Fans and analysts alike had them poised for a deep playoff run, and it seemed like they were ready to achieve that. And the preseason only elevated those hopes. Sure, it's the preseason, but when it's the first taste of hockey in almost five months, fans put it under a microscope. The Predators looked sharp and energized, giving fans a glimpse of the potential that this team had. Stamkos scored in his preseason debut in Nashville, and Marcheseau put together five points in the two games that he played. All signs were pointing to a great season for Nashville. That was until just days before the season opener, UC Soros was put out with a day-to-day -day injury, forcing Nashville to look to their backup goalie Scott Wedgwood to start against their divisional rivals, the Dallas Stars. The Stars are known to have one of the deepest teams in the league, and they proved it by making it to the Western Conference Finals last season. But in order to be the best, you have to beat the best. So this was a good early test for the new-look Preds. 
but the Stars buried two quick goals at the start of the second period, silencing the loud Nashville crowd. But then just a minute later, Marcia Sohn Forsberg showed early signs of some chemistry on the power play as Forsberg put one in from the slot. Unfortunately though, the Stars would score two more, putting the game out of reach. Despite the late game surge, the Preds fell 4-3, even with almost double Dallas's shots. But this really wasn't too much to worry about. The Stars are no doubt one of the best teams in the league, UC Soros was injured, and it was game 1 out of 82. They had a lot of time to figure it out. Good news came around as Soros was declared healthy for the next game against the Detroit Red Wings, though it doesn't matter who you have in net when you can't score. The Preds dropped their second game of the season to the Detroit Red Wings, falling 3-0, once again doubling their opponent in shots. The next game against the Kraken was a dogfight with Seattle taking a two-goal lead, then Nashville storming back with two of their own, then the Kraken scored again, but that was answered by the new guy Brady Shea to tie the game at three, heading into the third period. This would be a good first one of the season, in front of your home crowd, coming back from an early deficit, but that was all thrown out the window when Seattle scored four unanswered goals in the third period. He scores! Bring carry it, and open the slot, score! Don't look past, puck faded towards the far post! Towards the empty net and in. They then hosted the Edmonton Oilers, who were having an early season struggle of their own. But despite Marshall so getting his first with his new team, the Predators dropped their fourth game in a row and remained winless on the season. The trend continued as they lost to Detroit for the second time in the season, giving them a franchise worst start, being 0 and 5. But despite the losing, the underlying numbers looked good. Despite being 0-5, they outshot their opponents 177-137, to and they also attained a 57% Corsi, which pretty much means they controlled the play most of the time. So it's only a matter of time before they would win. In trying to make a change, they called up rookie Zach LaRue to bring a physical presence. Last season in the AHL, he played in 66 games and totaled 197 penalty minutes while also putting up 48 points. So, a flash of offense and a whole lot of physicality. He said on his call-up he wasn't going to bring any miracles, but he must have done something right as the Preds won their first game of the season with a 4-0 win over the Boston Bruins. They then followed it up with a 3-2 win over the Blackhawks, and then a 4-3 overtime win against the Columbus Blue Jackets. Sure, those two teams are in the bottom of the league, but all wins count the same. It seemed as though the Preds had finally found their footing. Well, maybe not, because since that little three-game win streak, the Preds have gone 2-4-2, two, and two, solidifying their spot dead last in the league, tied with the Montreal Canadiens. Granted, it has been a tough schedule. They played the Avalanche twice, both Stanley Cup Finals teams, the Lightning, and the Red Hot Capitals in that time. But if you want to be a good team, you have to beat good teams, and Nashville just has not been doing that. So now, sitting last in the league, what can they do? Could Coach Andrew Brunette be in trouble? Probably not. Hockey coaches don't usually last long, but it's a little bit early to cut ties with a guy who was a Jack Adams finalist last year. So Brunette probably isn't going anywhere. Trotz did make some waves last week on the radio when he threatened a rebuild if things didn't start to look up. But even if they do continue to keep losing, I wouldn't expect a full teardown of the roster. Trotz went all in over the summer with some big name signings, so core guys like Forsberg, Yossi, O'Reilly, Stammer, Marcia Soche, and Saros probably aren't going anywhere and they'll stick around in Nashville. But I wouldn't be surprised if anyone else got moved. Trotz definitely isn't bluffing. Just a few days ago, he put defenseman Dante Fabro on waivers to be picked up by the Columbus Blue Jackets, which was pretty much a surprise to everyone as Fabro's a very solid NHL defenseman. So if you think Trotz won't make a move, think again. And despite being last in the league, the Preds still have a good shot at the playoffs. Right now, Money Puck has them at a 14.3% chance at making the playoffs, because frankly, they're just getting unlucky. They're ranked last in shooting percentage and last in goals above expected, which pretty much means that they're not scoring the amount of goals that they should be for the chances they're generating. And this roster is just far too talented to keep that up the rest of the year. I still think they're going to make the playoffs, maybe it won't be a divisional spot, but it's still too early to tell what the future holds for this team. At this time last year, 81% of teams who were in a playoff spot made the playoffs, and that goes up to almost 88% by January 1st. So if the Predators want to make the playoffs, they need to make a change now, before the hole that they're digging themselves into gets too deep to climb out of.